Jack the vehicle up and remove the wheel. Detach the caliper from the suspension upright. If you encounter from the pads interference with the outer edge of the disc, remove the pads first. We recommend that you do not disconnect the brake hose from the caliper and arrange the caliper so that the hose is not put under any strain. Remove the worn disc. On some vehicles, you may need to remove the wheel hub before the disc due to the system layout. Clean the mating surface on the new disc. Clean the mating surface on the wheel hub, removing any traces of rust or other deposits. Check that the surface is not damaged or deformed. Manually check that there is no play in the bearings and that the hub can rotate freely. Fit the new disc to the hub using the correct torque settings and bolt it into the right position before the wheel studs are fitted. Check disc oscillation using the special dial gauge indicator. Do this test carefully as an incorrect oscillation setting can lead to abnormal wear and vibrations while braking. Fit the magnetic base to the suspension upright. Position the gauge probe 5 mm from the external edge of the disc. Fix the disc in position with two or more wheel studs to simulate the wheel being fully fastened. The maximum oscillation value in one complete rotation of the disc should be 0.10 mm for cars, 0.12 mm for commercial vehicles. If necessary, remove and refit the disc to the hub in a different position and repeat the oscillation test. If the oscillation value is too high, check the hub oscillation readings. If necessary, replace the hub and refit the disc. Bear in mind that the maximum oscillation value measured at the hub should be about half that recommended for the disc. Now replace the pads. Remove the worn pads and springs. Clean the seatings on the caliper and completely retract the piston or pistons. In the case of rear calipers with a parking brake mechanism, the piston has to be retracted by turning it with a special tool and following the manufacturer's instructions. While retracting the piston, make sure that no brake fluid escapes from the cylinder reservoir and remove it if necessary. Fit the new springs and pads with the friction material facing the disc. Refit the caliper to the upright and use a torque wrench to tighten up the bolts to the correct settings. With floating discs, manually check that the calipers are free to move on the guides. Connect the wear indicator cable. Press the brake pedal a few times to close the pads up against the disc. Repeat until the amount of travel on the brake pedal is correct. Check the brake fluid level in the reservoir and top up if necessary. Only use new brake fluid of the recommended type from a sealed container. Remember that brake fluid should be changed periodically following the manufacturer's instructions. Refit the wheel and use a torque wrench to tighten up the studs, nuts to the correct setting. Repeat the operation for the other wheel on the same axle. Testing and bedding in the brakes. Check that the work has been carried out properly by taking the vehicle for a short test drive. This test will show if there are any vibrations or noise coming from the brakes. To bed the brakes in, use them gently and sparingly, without ABS, for the first 200 kilometers, 120 miles. Incorrect bedding in can affect brake efficiency. Remember that when braking for the first few times, the brakes will be less effective than usual. 